Hello to my presentation. Uh, my name is Adam Hamsik. I'm working on the NetBSD project. And the uh, actual theme of our presentation is NetBSD regression testing. In uh, NetBSD, we want to really focus on stable and correct code. And uh, one way of achieving this goal is to, to be sure that our goal behaves the same way even after many changes we do during the development cycle. Okay, uh, here is some small talk outlined. Like first, we would like to I would like to introduce some benefits of regression testing how it can help uh, during uh, operating system development, like we have here in NetBSD or in general. Uh, next, I would like to describe how we use it or how we trying to achieve uh, av our goals with available tools. Uh, next, I want to explain some unique technology behind our test suite and uh, how we really use uh, this in, uh, unique technology to, to get uh, our testing system work, working like we want. And then uh, I would like to show you some examples. So why, why do we need uh, tests? The only answer is because developers, developers make mistakes and uh, we don't really need them and we don't really need bugs. And we want to catch all almost all bugs before they got released or before they went to head. Okay, so regression testing. Operating systems are most complex pieces of software out there. And uh, even small change in one subsystem may end uh, and or may break up a whole other subsystem or some related subsystem there. So if you commit something to virtual file system, you might end with broken whatever else you might broke. And uh, if errors and bugs are not caught soon enough after commit, then you end up with some weird stuff which was changed a couple of times be after your commit and uh, it's much harder to find out what went wrong and how to fix it properly. So. Sooner you find that uh, your commit made a bug or made some regression, that's better. And uh, also, we want to keep our users happy because that's the point. So, uh, exactly, uh, benefits of continuous testing are, as I said, you have more stable code base uh, with uh, m less amount of newly introduced bugs then uh, you have much more stable releases because the release time which you need to for testing the new release is much shorter and uh, you can achieve a much stable release in the short time because your code is tested well enough and you can say my code behaves exact same way how it behaves before and which makes your developers and your users happy. So what do we use in NetBSD to do our regression testing? So uh, one of our developers called Julio uh, wrote automating testing suite, which is used for writing tests and an analyzing them. Then we have a really unique feature of NetBSD, which can be found in any other operating system, and it's called RAMP, which was written by Puka. He really spent a lot of time on that, and it's really sometimes not as amazing as weird stuff. Then we have uh, automated NetBSD installation and test application, which basically uses QEMU, and on its application which uses QEMU, and on, on top of that there is some uh, expect stuff written, which uh, basically do automate installation of NetBSD and, and can be used for running test suits on virtual machines to, to 
ensure that our systems behave the same way after each build. And the uh, fourth feature which is really usable is that our NetBSD system is fully cross-buildable, which means that we can cross-build between platforms and even between operating systems. So what's RAMP? I already mentioned that it's a really unique feature of NetBSD and you can find it anywhere else. And uh, what it gives us is the ability to build almost whole kernel as user space library or process, or user space library. And uh, you can use non-modified kernel sources for that. You do, you do not need anything changed in your kernel sources to build this RAM. But to be sure, I would like to encourage that it's not user space kernel or anything. You just build library for accessing, for example, file system, or you can build library for uh, TCP network stack. <clears throat> it works with dev device drivers, network stack, file system, and it's, there is even work in progress support for ZFS file system inside RAM. When a RAM process crashes, it doesn't crash your machine. It, the only thing you got is full uh, comparable uh, dump with your kernel dump. The dumps are almost the same. And the other really nice feature is that with RAM, you, uh, your application which is using RAM can forward syscalls to, to other process or even to other machine. How it looks like, I will show you in next image because basically it's really hard to understand from talk. So this is how a uh, classic room process looks like. You have some hosting process here which have some application and there is, and uh, to, to be working with RAMP, you have to link LAMP library, RAMP library is there. You have some RAM ker kernel base, which is modified, a couple of modified basic kernel routines, which are written from scratch f just for RAM. And then you have three basic modules here. You have network stack, you have virtual file system, and device drivers. All of them are unmodified kernel sources and are used and are used uh, just from kernel directory. For example, with uh, a virtual file system, you can use different sort of file systems which are supported by kernel, like libraries, and make your application understand, for example, a fast file system on uh, your disk image. So, and then you have some RAMP hypercall interface here, which basically forwards the syscalls to RAM kernel. Uh, here is a small example how, how it really looks like. Uh, this command starts a server which loads everything which was built into the RAM kernel to, to a process and opens a Unix socket on this address. Then uh, we made this environment variable where we say, okay, this is our Unix, this is our room server, and he listens on this address. Then when you run this command, which is basically mod stat, which prints a list of loaded modules, but working on a RAMP. Then you see that in our RAMP server, we have this list of modules where device mapper is one of them. And uh, just, to, just to show that uh, we're actually talking to real device and it's, it's not something which is somewhere else or just we, we can run a command called dmctl which just uh, grabs and talks with a device driver called dm. And here we have output from it where we say, okay, we have these available drivers inside of a dm driver. The point is that 
we actually can see that we are talking with real driver here. The DMC TV process doesn't see any difference if he talks with uh, kernel or if he talks with RAM kernel. There is no difference to it. The only thing is that right now, DM is running from room all server. There is no DM in real system. Yeah, the screenshot is, was really nice, but how it really worked, it was quite messy. The, this is the uh, small diagram, which should probably explain it a little bit more. So we have our DMCTL CTL program, which is using T, this Unix socket as a, as gateway to, to RAMP, which is running in its own process called RAMP all server. And, and between RAMP all server, there is a RAMP hypervisor, which is running inside of both RAMP all server and DMCTL. <laughs> And what's the main point is that inside of RAMP all server, we have device mapper driver, which is basically unmodified Unix kernel, which is unmodified NetBase as the kernel source. And then uh, inside NetBSD, we basically use Anita for uh, continuous regression testing, where we build our systems uh, constantly in, in a row for three or four hours, and then run these, then run our regression testing suite with Anita on a virtual machine in QMU. The, the point is that after, after this run, we can collect our logs from uh, Unix, from our regression test suite, and we can analyze them, and we can see that Okay, after this sort of commit, there was no there was no regression made, or our tests behaved the same way how they behaved before. And uh, the Relang team even set up the the website where you can watch how we progress during uh, days or months, and we can even analyze the process on that. Here you have some more infos where you can find some details about RAMP and uh, our test suite, where uh, we have put a lot of work these days. And this one is linked about automated run of regression test suite on uh, our own hardware, on hardware made by, uh, owned by NetBSD Foundation, where they run basically three sorts of tests, one for i3, Eight six, second one for AMD sixty four, and third one for Spark processor architecture. Okay, uh, that would be probably all. Do you have any questions? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, basically, they should be compatible for now. So you should be always uh, able to run our testing suite with his new project, QA. And later on, uh, during the transition process, uh, we, uh, the whole test suite will be converted to new one uh, or to QA later on. Anything else? Okay, uh, then thanks for your attention, and I hope we can see you together in next B BSD day.